So she never processed that my dad died. I, I refused for a few weeks, but I did give in. We always knew it was a scam the whole time. So I started buying gift cards. It was 7000 then 10000 Maybe totaled over 100000 So am I going to be in trouble? I think you're one degree away from getting in trouble. Many people fall into love scams and lose their life savings and relationships with family. But sometimes, these romance scams even lead to serious time behind bars. Today, we assist a woman who fell victim to a scammer and just can't stop sending money after surrendering the proceeds from the sale of her home and her husband's insurance policy. And don't forget to stick around, we'll reveal the person behind this whole scheme. Real quick guys, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Your comment and like could help stop someone from being scammed. Let's get into it. Hello, my name is Linda. I have been widowed for two and a half years. I'm retired. I spend my time doing crafts. I was married for 50 years plus. We had four children, four right in a row, one, two, three, four. <laughs> We enjoyed going to the grocery store together. Sometimes we would go to a restaurant. On Sunday, we would go to church and we would usually see our two grandchildren on the weekend. He treated me great and I tried to treat him great. We had a good marriage. Linda and her husband had been married for 50 years when they found out that he had cancer. My husband was faithful in setting up so that I wouldn't have a need. He did have an adequate life insurance policy. We also sold our house and moved in with our son just before he passed. So we had the proceeds from our house. I had a life insurance policy, money in the bank, and we had a nice new car and I paid off my car. Linda's husband did everything he could to make sure that she would be financially secured before his passing. And he was on hospice, so I saw him gradually go downhill. She never processed that my dad died. She went from he's gone to this guy starts talking to her. Romance began. It was something she hadn't had in, you know, 50 years. And she just moved on to a new relationship immediately. After about six months to a year after my husband died, I realized how lonesome I was, how I had to do things alone, sit at the table, eat my dinner without anybody to talk to, watch TV without anyone to react with, no one to give me a hug or a kiss or more than that. <laughs> so I, I started wondering what it would be like to go out with a man and have conversation and and uh, start dating. One day I came across a friend request and it was a young soldier and I thought, well, he probably needs a pen pal, somebody to send him some news, send him some cheer. His name is Daniel Manuel. He said he was staff sergeant in Syria. He was handsome. Gorgeous blue eyes. He had short hair because of the military, but his, his hair was black. And many times he wore a green beret. He was muscular. He said he could deadlift 450 pounds. I told him, and I'm quite sure that I'm old enough to be his mother. Dan's voice has, a, has an accent. I'm not sure his accent. He said he's been in the Army and out of the United States for many years, like 15 years or more. And um, he sounds English. He does pronounce some of his words a little different, and sometimes I have to ask him to repeat himself. I mean, I at one point he even said he was in the U.S. military, which I'm a veteran, and I was like, there's no way. I've already looked him up. But he later said he was in a camp outside in the desert, outside the area and it was in ISIS territory. We were talking on Facebook. He would say sweet things. One day I said, in the morning, uh, write a poem for me. So the next day, yes, he wrote me two points. Linda and Daniel began to speak every day. 
The two built a bond through text messages and phone calls. Daniel would send her a text message in the morning and night. Everything seemed to be going great until Daniel was sent to battle. After I'd known Daniel for only about a month, maybe two months, he told me he went on a two-day mission in, into ISIS territory. When he came back, he told me that they had gone underground in tunnels. He said they confiscated a box. So when they got back, the commander commended him for a good mission and he said he wanted to reward him. So he gave him two gold bars and he gave him money, which was maybe totaled over a hundred thousand. But he didn't want to keep it on him in his army camp. So he asked if he could mail it to me. Then he said he was going to send the box to me and he wanted my address, which I gave him. It said that it went from Syria to Spain. Later, I heard from the shipping company that he didn't pay enough postage because the rates had gone up. So they asked me to pay the rest of the postage, which was 2,500. I, I refused for a few weeks, but I did give in and pay it. Then it went to London, England to Canada. There were a, a weight charge because it says, they said it was a heavy box. Each time it was like 7,000, then 10,000. The package just took so long and so many charges, custom charges. It just kept adding up. When it crossed over the border, they told me they took an x-ray of the box and they knew, they said, we know what is in the box. And they also said they knew there were gold bars. And they said, you have to pay taxes on one, but we're going to let the other one go. I said, I can't pay anymore. And they said, well, if you don't pay it, we're going to report it to the U.S. government or the FBI. Oh, my bank started asking questions. My, and then so they said, well, you can send gift cards. So I started buying gift cards. Sometimes 5,000, sometimes 4,000, sometimes 10,000, sometimes 7,000. It takes so many to add up to what they want. I started out sending the codes to the carrier through the email, scratching it off the back. I started using up all my savings. I had used up over 70,000. You know, this guy got a credit card in her name and and had it mailed to her. So how he even did that, like, he must have her social security number. And he said he could help me get a credit card. He asked me my, my bank account number and my routing number, and I gave it. He did get me a credit card, was sent to me, and it was um, a large credit card, maybe like 15000 and I had another one for 8000 and I maxed those both, both. I believe that I have sent about 150000 Linda still continues to figure out ways to get Daniel home. When her family found out about all the money she had sent, they did everything they could to get her to understand Daniel was a scammer. At one point, I took her phone. Um, she, then she told me I was keeping her prisoner because I took her phone, so I gave her phone back. He had me delete the chat and the Facebook or block it and I did. She said she stopped talking to him and then like three or four months later we found out that that wasn't true. After about a week I thought I wonder how Daniel's doing. So I I just put a message on and asked him if he was still there. She's lied too many times. If she's still talking to him, he might convince her to uh, like um, sell her car. I have blocked Daniel about five times, but I find that I miss the chat, so I go back. When she says she's not, you know, oh, I'm not talking to him. Oh, I'm not sending him any more money. We all are kind of like, yeah. I need closure. I. I either need to meet him or block him and say goodbye. 
she has to know that this guy is a hundred percent a scammer otherwise she just keeps holding out that no he's gonna he's gonna come back in one day and introduce himself or fly here and she still holds out this hope that she's gonna be proven right after interviewing linda it left our team shocked because she was still sticking up for this profile claiming to be daniel she knew so much yet still wanted his promises to be true the next day our team got straight to work we started to go through everything linda was able to provide on daniel we had the carrier service email and website photos of the packages she was supposed to receive containing the money and gold bars daniel's leave certification an address in san francisco to a home that he claimed he owned and these photos of this man who daniel was claiming to be we ran an image search on socialcatfish.com Bree was able to verify that this man in these images was a military man named Stephen from the United Kingdom. He has nothing to do with this scam and Daniel was simply using his images and likeness. He's completely innocent. As we dug into more of the information Linda sent us, we came across this image of a young man. We wanted to figure out why she sent this to us and where she got it from. So Bree and I set up a call with her the next day. My question to you is, so we, we saw a photo of a younger black guy can you tell us about that i was video chatting with him one time that picture popped up i quickly snapped a screenshot and then um daniel said oh i have to change my vet password because somebody is um messing with my computer and they've um scammed it or hacked it and Sometimes I thought maybe that is the real him, but um, I don't know. He doesn't talk or act like a black man. He says things that I think only a white man would say. What does that mean? The, one example I think of is he just got out of the shower. I said, so what do you look like now? And he, he says, I'm all pink. <laughs> so, so, and he's, he always says he has blue eyes. Yeah, and he said some derogatory things before about some people in his unit. So he's racist? Yeah. All right. Well, this ironic. What is it about him that keeps you communicating with him? He's kind of fun to chat with. He's humorous. He's polite. I think I just need that attention. He has a nice voice, but he, I, he hasn't video chatted with me a month or two months. It's, it's just, I just enjoy talking to him. And maybe because I don't, I don't have any, that, that type of connection anywhere else. I guess what I want to ask you is, what are you hoping to come out of this? What is the light at the end of the tunnel for you? It would make me happy if you found out that he was a nice guy like he pretends to be i know i can give up because i blocked him many times and i was fine with it i thought okay good it's over but i just reached out or he reached out again i just want the truth whatever wherever he is i want to know where he is and who he is well linda we'll talk to you soon okay just let you know we're all on your team through this your son has your back I have your back, Bree, the whole team has your back. We want better for you. Thank you. I, I want better for myself. I just, I just don't know what it is. We're gonna help you, okay? Thanks. All right, talk to you soon. Have a happy Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving, <laughs> bye. bye. It was clear to us that Linda understood that Daniel wasn't who he claimed to be. She was just confused and lonely. The concept of simply creating a profile of whoever you wanted to be online and pretending to be that person just wasn't clicking. We had to come up with a way to get her to understand how dangerous it was to stay in contact with this person. Brienne was able to find out some very interesting things about these people that were accepting wire transfers from Linda. And it was exactly what we needed to get her to completely block Daniel. After a few more days of researching, it was time to sit down with Linda and reveal everything that we found.
But before we go any further, we want to let you know that we are taking submissions for our future videos on our YouTube channel. If you are finding yourself in the same situation as Chad and you need help getting a family member to come to terms with blocking a potential scammer they've been conversing with online, reach out to us. We can help you. Our email is share my story at socialcatfish.com. Nice to meet you. Uh, my name is David, and this is my beautiful bride, Brienne. Uh, we own social. Hi, Linda. I'm glad to have this final interview, and I hope I'll find some closure. I went and got my box of cleaner. Oh, no. <laughs> you came prepared. I think you know something. It's all speculation and. I've, what I've seen with other videos. One of the first questions I had, Linda, like you were actually pretty savvy with this. Like you found out who the real guy was. You, um, you know, you looked up pictures, you know, you, you realized what was going on with the courier service. Does it matter if he's real or not? Or is this more, do you think this is more of an addiction for you? Definitely an addiction because it's given me attention, love, interest, whether the love is true or phony you know i think one thing that a lot of people don't understand is like you've woken up every single day of your adult life next to your husband one of the things that touched me that i've run into quite a bit is that like you know you're like oh you know like i had somebody sitting next to me on the couch laughing with me watching tv and i had somebody that i could wake up next to i mean for 50 years of your life and then now you don't have that and so for you this is it's not talking to friends. It's not talking to your family because you have friends and family. This is missing that significant other, isn't it? You really hit the nail on the head. We understand where you're coming from. We're here to help you today. We have a lot of information. But my first question before we get started is like, you did your own research. So what are you hoping that we come with that you haven't found already? I hope that Daniel is who he says he is. And I would be happy to meet him. If he isn't, then I will get over it. I will be glad to have the final verdict. So Linda, what's going on with you and Daniel right now? Supposedly he told me he was in Chicago. He ran out of gas and he would like me to send him $50. We have a lot more information for you and some things that I think will actually completely shock you. Okay, I don't, I'm not quite prepared to be shocked, but. So Linda, we looked at all the information that you'd sent over to us, and I'd like to go over some of the results that we found. Starting with the image that you sent over to us of Daniel, we found and confirmed that his true identity is Stephen Kelly. And this is something you know. Yes. I, I did your um, reverse image uh, application and I found that out. And I looked up Stephen Kelly online and found his blog or website. I've been following his website. Linda, we looked at the address that you had sent over to us. Um, we were able to find who owned this property and it is a couple by the name of Edgar and Carol. And these people have no connection with Daniel whatsoever. You know, he's lying about where he lives to you. He's lying about it. I mean, what are your thoughts on that? Um, I think his connection is more with Houston. And he said he was at Corpus Christi stationed there in the army. He hasn't been honest with you about this address and you don't seem surprised. Are, I'm not are, surprised. But are you bothered by any of this? I'm bothered um, that he thought he had to make up stories about himself. I don't. I don't know why a person would do that. Well, how much money have you sent him? Over a hundred thousand. I could tell. Like, there's probably a lot of people in the world that would lie to you for a hundred thousand dollars. So that's probably why he's lying to you. I would like to know yeah. what else he's lying about. Yeah, so we we received the certificate of leave that you sent over to us um, from Daniel. And what we had found was the signature was false. Um, we also found that the Army Chief of Staff that's listed on the certificate is no longer the Army Chief of Staff. 
These little details alone make this entire document um, invalid. Right. I'm not surprised about that either. I just wonder who that who the man is, why he is doing this. Is it only for money? And if if so, I uh, fed right into it. Yeah, I'm just going to be really candid with you right now. This person is only talking to you for money. They reached out to you for money. They started the conversations for money. They fell in love with you for money. They manipulated you for money. They told you lies for money. And they gave you excuses for money. It's only for money. And we have some shocking things that we want to show you that um, I think some of it's going to scare you, to be honest. Let's talk about this courier company a little bit, Linda. Um, yeah. So are you still communicating with the courier company? No. They asked me for ID and um, they used IRS ID. They sent me a phone number to call and I called it and it was actually the IRS. It was their real number. And I gave them all the details. They said, ma'am, this certainly sounds like you've been scammed. So I just blocked that company. Yep. So we looked into the SFC military one at gmail.com. So obviously this isn't connected to Daniel. So I don't know what that means to me. It's also not connected to the courier. This is someone else's Instagram account. And it's somebody pretending to be in the military. So basically what happened is somebody created this email. They were contacting you with it. But when we traced the email back, we found out that they were on Instagram and they're reaching out to other people pretending to be somebody in the military. They reach out to people like you, they create fake emails, and they do this to a lot of people. So you are not the only person that's being scammed. In fact, we have some information about this. So you had sent uh, about $75,000 or more through wire transfers to various people and even businesses, right? Okay, yes. Our search team was actually able to track those people down. Brienne, was able to track them down and actually get them on the phone and talk to them. You wanna hear what they said? Yeah. So first I, I called Adel Gisa. This is someone that you had wired funds to. And she explained to me her situation. Basically, she was talking to a military man online and he was deployed in Syria, needed funds. She ended up sending about $14,000 of her own money and law enforcement got involved, came to her, told her that she needs to stop sending money and the banks froze her accounts. So Linda, you're connected to this person. Because I sent money to her bank. So the money that you sent is being laundered through her and then sent other places enough to where law enforcement got involved. And they reached out to these, this, this, this person and they shut their bank accounts down and law enforcement has told her that if she sends any more money, she's gonna get arrested. I also spoke to Lelaine. This is another person that you had wired funds to. She was a little nervous talking to me, so she didn't share too much information, but she did explain that um, she believed that someone created a bank account under her, her name and her information, sending money to that bank account and basically funneling money through her bank account. She was also approached by another woman who also said that she, she basically felt like maybe she was part of the scam as well. Mm -hmm. So this kind of, as you can see, it's like a spider web. It's branching out. There's so many other people involved where, you know, you sent the funds, but it doesn't stop there. The funds get sent further and further to other people. So am I going to be in trouble or my bank or am I in trouble with the law? I think you're one degree away from getting in trouble. I don't know to what extent where this money's gone or who's gotten this money, right? We can only just make the assumption that this scammer has scammed you, they've scammed these other people, and this money is filtered back to them, right? This is bigger than you, Linda. This is affecting other people's lives on top of your relationship with your family. I'm not sure all that you're telling me. I don't quite comprehend it. I feel like Yes, but I was an in innocent victim. We're not saying you're going to jail. We're saying that, that you could potentially start getting in trouble. I have no doubt that law enforcement knows who you are. We don't know, like just like you, we don't know where the money's going. And 
you don't want to get caught up in anything that can potentially get you in trouble. These people have already gotten in trouble, but you don't want to keep sending money and you don't want to get involved in something. Okay. Yeah. I, I have no more money. Yeah. I won't be sending money because I have none unless they somehow can get uh, what I do have, my paycheck, my social security check. Yeah. So the thing is, Linda, though, you've been you've been involved in a military romance scam. In these types of scams, usually a person will claim they're overseas on a mission. They're deployed. Um, what they'll use, they'll usually state that they need money for food, um, Internet. In this case, this person, Daniel, needs money for a package. There's so many different reasons why they need these funds, but what we've found in these types of scams also is that these people in the military, they never need money. They are completely taken care of. They don't need money for anything. Why do you think that that picture popped up during the video chat? Based on what you know, you know everything's fake, right? That he told you and, and gave you, right? So based on what you know, what do you think happened? Well, for a, for a while I wondered, is this the real person who I'm talking to. It it was like he dropped the phone, his phone, and he picked he picked it up and he was looking at it like probably looking at me and I quickly turned my head away from the camera so he couldn't see me, but I I quickly took a screenshot of him. What can you tell me about that picture? That's probably the real guy that you're talking to. This isn't the first time where we've seen a scammer accidentally reveal themselves. So we have one more thing that we want to do. It's a surprise. We, we want to bring your son on. It's okay, but I'll probably break down. In fact, I already am. You know, your son cares about you mm -hmm. and he, he wants to help you out. Um, mm -hmm. We're going to bring on Chad right now, okay? Chad, how's it going? Hey, how you doing? Good, good. Hi, Chad. Nice to meet you. You too. I just want to get you up to speed. So we just had a conversation with your mom. We went through basically all the information that she had provided. We showed her where the pictures came from, the email addresses. We were even able to track down the money mules that had received money and show that they actually got in trouble with law enforcement and had their bank accounts shut down. And so one of the things we communicated with your mom is that she's only one degree away from these people that law enforcement's talking to, that their bank accounts are getting shut down, and she doesn't want to be in the same position as them. We wanted to bring you two together and then just have you talk to your mom and tell her how you feel and then try to make sure that she knows that she has the support like from you on your end and, and anything that she needs to, to move forward. I think she knows she has my support because I keep... I keep telling her I'm not going to give it to her anymore and then I keep coming back and doing it. But that's because I can't not be there. Um, I promised my dad I'd be there. I've been lucky to be married for 20 years. I couldn't imagine waking up every single day to a significant other and then having that ripped away from you overnight and then dealing with that. We've dealt with a lot of these situations and we want to provide your mom an outlet to where she can still have conversations with people, a potential significant other, or maybe go on a date or do something in real life and that's not going to hurt her or that somebody's not going to lie to her and that she's going to do it in a safe manner. You, you had more time with dad than some people have with their spouses their entire lives. I'm not saying don't find somebody else, don't move on. And if it happens, it happens. I don't think your mom's in a rush to get married again. It's the conversations. Like, I think it's just, she had this special, special, special thing for a very long time. And it breaks her heart every day. And this is her coping mechanism. Like, I think you had said that she really hasn't coped with your father's passing that, you know, just segued straight into this relationship. This has been her coping mechanism. And I feel like sometimes she just keeps doing it because she enjoys the, the companionship that she gets from it, but it's a criminal. It's a criminal that she's dealing with. And I, I just wish that that would finally soak in. That screenshot of that man, I never could believe that's who the person I was talking to. I keep saying Daniel, because that's who I know him as. Daniel was racist, and that just doesn't make sense to me why this black Nigerian would say, always say bad things about them. 
You send him a hundred thousand dollars. He'll be whoever you want him to be. The conversations that you were having every single day were so important to you and they made you feel so good that you didn't want to lose that. And that's why you overlooked them. And that's why you unblocked them five times. I'm not going to do this again. In fact, I have no means to do it again. <laughs> every time I hear something like that, she's still contacting him. And there's, there's something she's not getting and she keeps pursuing it. And it doesn't make sense to people like me or my wife. When mom's ready to move on, we're here in the same town. The whole goal is the, to be to be near her and to, and to help her. A lot of people in your situation, they don't have the chads of this world. Your son will do anything for you. You have the support system. You just have to make the decision to change your environment. I don't understand how this person was so convincing to me. How, how this lies seemed real and and how he could come on on the video almost every day for a year and a half think of it as this is his job right he wakes up and he talks to you he talks to these other women this is just his job this is the disgusting side of this they call people like you their clients like where they go they clock in every day and them clocking in is when you wake up and when they clock out is when you go to bed. They have these pre-scripted things that they're gonna tell you. You want something to be real, and so you will overlook a lot of the red flags. I think in the back of my mind, I knew all this. I, it's like I knew what you were gonna tell me. So Linda, what are the next steps for you? Do you think we helped you out here today? Um, do you have a male friend in his 70s? Nice guy, good looking. I can't find any. Well, let's let's get you let's get you on a date. Let's figure mm -hmm. out how to get you on a date, yeah. and just know the only way to fully remove yourself is to change that environment. You just need to keep Daniel blocked. It's like going on a diet. Yeah, you have to eat, eat something healthy. That's right. Dead. All right, you have a fantastic evening. Thank you for hanging out with us this time. I really hope we were able to, to provide you closure. Thank, Thank you so much. much. Bye. Goodbye. Bye.